Hi, we're going to talk today about the location search functionality within uh, the Photographer's Ephemeris. This uh, tutorial will apply to version 4.9 and beyond. A few things have changed um, from earlier versions, uh, but we'll walk through it step by step. So first of all, I'm going to select the locations tab here at the, at the bottom. You'll see that uh, if you're familiar with earlier versions of the app, that the layout has changed a little. And on the left here, at the top left, we now have three um, options to choose from. The first two are to do with search. So that's if you need to find um, a place by its name, its address or place name, or you can search by coordinates. That's the latitude or longitude coordinate. And then you have your saved locations. By default, it opens on iPad uh, to show you the saved locations. Um, and I won't go into that too much because that's pretty much as it's been for some time. Um, and we have other tutorials that, that cover that functionality. Suffice to say, though, that instead of if you want to search for a place that you don't currently have saved, you need to go to one of the two search screens now rather than doing it uh, all within this one screen. A couple of things have changed as a result. One is when you type in this, this field at the top, it's simply filtering the places uh, that you have saved in your list rather than doing any additional searching, which is how it used to work. And separately, the uh, sync button has moved up to the top right, um, along with the plus button. So you can add a saved location directly from this screen. This little uh, left right expansion arrow here simply expands the screen and you can pop back again to, to restore the sidebar. That's this split screen uh, view controller that uh, iOS supports. So let's talk about the search piece. Uh, first of all, we'll go to search for address or place name. This is pretty much uh, as you'd expect it to be. Um, so I will type in a well-known address, Downing Street. And there it is. So you notice there that I had to type in England. Um, so I'm currently located in the US and my device is set up to US as its region. And so the search tends to um, focus on local results. So sometimes you'll have to add a little bit of extra context if it's somewhere far away that you're, you're looking for. Um, by contrast, let me try, I haven't tried this before so I don't know quite what's gonna happen. I'm going to guess an address. Let's try 640. Pearl Street. I have no idea where that is. There we go, Colorado. I'm going to tap that. And that's here in town, in Boulder. So that's a uh, search. If I type in uh, something that isn't a fully qualified address, but is a, um, a name of a place, so Stonehenge is a good example, you'll see it pops up with Stonehenge, Colorado. I had no idea there was such a place um, until I tried this. Uh, yesterday, um, but there is. And it comes up first because, again, the, the device is set to Colorado. So if you're in England and doing this, you probably will find the second result will pop up um, uh, the, the, the proper Stonehenge in Wiltshire. So you can tap that, you can set the pin to that location. We'll go to satellite maps and zoom in, and there it is, Stonehenge, as you'd expect. You can also save that by tapping the button on the right here, the little download button, and that'll be added to your saved locations list directly. So that is um, location search. So now let's talk about search for coordinates. I'm gonna tap on the search for coordinates field. You'll see a few things have happened there. Um, first of all, the search field is already showing some coordinates and whenever you go to the screen, if there's nothing previously typed in there, it will automatically populate the field with the coordinates of the red map pin. So you see on that first section where it says detected coordinate, uh, 51.17 degrees north, 1.8 degrees west, that is uh, the current position of the red pin, which as you saw from before is at Stonehenge. So underneath, it says, what are the places nearby or at that coordinate that I can find? And it lists Stonehenge, England, Stonehenge, Wiltshire. 
those two results come from different um, sources. So the first one is coming from Apple's own uh, geocoding service, and the other ones uh, come from um, our own geocoding service that we use to supplement the results that Apple gives you. Apple tends to only come up with one result at a time, um, which can be a little bit disheartening. Um, so we supplement that with, with these additional services. The third one that you see there is a service called What Three Words. Now they've been in the news quite a lot in recent months and they've been around for some years and I've always been interested in trying to incorporate this into the app. So what they've done is essentially divide the whole planet into three meter squares, uh, roughly 10 feet square, and each one is assigned a three word address. So it's word, dot, word, dot, word. And um, it's just an easier way of dealing, of, of communicating about location. So instead of having to specify, read out a, a latitude or longitude to six decimal places, try to memorize it, which I certainly couldn't do, you can refer to it by this three word address. So the app um, will look that up for you for the coordinate and you can see that um, at the bottom of the screen there. So just to hop back to the, um, quickly to the search for address place. So this one is awaited.passively.landings. If I start typing that in, awaited.passively.land, and we'll let it think about that. It comes up with some suggestions as I'm typing. I'll type landing, and you'll see, uh, I guess I have to put in the last character, and there it is. That's the third one in the list. Again, it's prioritizing local addresses in the US here rather than GB, but I can use this three word address as well. So if you uh, are given a three word address or you see one online or you would like to use it, use those in the app, you can do that. You can type it into the address field and you can also discover the three word address for the pin location in this search for coordinates field. Um, the other thing to know is that uh, this now is it's pretty good at um, you can copy and paste a wide variety of formats of coordinates so let me show you what's something that we can do I go to Safari so here's one I looked up before it's the coordinates um, of uh, one of the Monroes in Scotland I'm going to copy that and then I will switch back here and paste those in and you'll see that it it can parse the coordinates with the degree symbols in north and west. You can also use degrees, minutes, seconds, or you can use degrees and decimal minutes. Um, and it's not too fussy about what the separator characters are. So you should find most things are, are uh, detected. And it shows the detected coordinate, and then it's found these places nearby. So if you want to now save that location, you can save any of these entries, you could save the coordinates as, as they appear there, or you could save this address here, or you could save the three word address. Um, I'll do that. That's now saved. And when I pop back to save locations, there it is. And I can go straight there. So that's uh, the the new saved locations feature in, um, oh, well, and search features within TPE 4.9. Um, I hope you find them useful. If you find any of these coordinate formats that you'd like to use and you can't use, let, let us know. You can write to us at support at photoephemeris.com and we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching.